My eyes a lot better, guys. I just have the sunglasses, so it's not glaring in, but my eyes a lot better. It's like a million percent better. That's actually almost normal. I don't know what we did. Maybe we got it out by rinsing it out. I don't know. But thank you to the ambulance that was on the side of the road that took the saline solution and pumped it in my eye. I appreciate that. Number one is a shortage of technicians. We're going to start right there. I'm getting slammed. I can't handle the work. I really need to hire someone and I need to get another truck. I have like five, six people right now that are waiting for me and they're all getting upset because I can't get to them. One is I haven't had a day off in three and a half weeks. I've worked three and a half weeks, Saturday, Sunday. I've worked through the Labor Day, Monday. I've worked all the holidays. In three weeks, I have not taken a day off. I need a day off because when I'm inside, I'm still working a computer business. Because we still have a computer business. Ring -a -geek, it's ringageek.com. Technicians to cover the computer business, but a day or two a week, I like to work it and keep things going on. And not that I don't trust my guys, but it's just nice to have a, um, it's nice to be involved still in your business. Never get completely out of your business. If you want to be an RV technician, I would re highly recommend go, going and doing it. Um, my customers watch this vi these videos I do. They watch them. And so I'm not hiding anything. I'm telling the truth about everything. I would definitely say if you're going to start off being an RV tech, a lot of people say you have to be certified. And that's baloney because there's no schooling for what we do. You have to be a master mechanic, a master plumber, a master electrician. You have to compromise a lot with RVs. They're made, I call them plastic fantastics. And then you guys know I've been calling them plastic fantastics for a while because they're plastic and they're fantastic. They're just not made like they are a house or they're just, the quality has to be light to keep them on the road and keep them going down the road at 70 miles an hour it has to be light. And I understand that. But there's different situations where you have to be gentle with these things. You can't just, you know, you can't just throw a sledgehammer to everything on these things, they're gonna break. And it's expensive when they break. This trade doesn't really take schooling. Matter of fact, this trade really doesn't take any kind of schooling. Um, as long as you know a little, bit of, a little bit about electricity, that's probably the most important thing, electricity in a camper. Because um, about 65% of my calls has to do with electricity, and 65%, so electrical, if you're an electrician and you look, you don't have much work, well, electrician's already buried in your field anyways, but if you wanna start RV repair on the side and you're an electrician, you're gonna have a really good jump on this um, because a lot of it's electrical. I mean, it's just a 110, RVs are just 110. Um, 50 amp is just the two legs, you know, two 110 legs. So it's basically, it's very simple. It's very simple to figure out. But um, if you don't know anything about power, you, you probably should research that a little bit before tackling these things. But most people know a little bit. They can put an outlet and receptacle and they can do that stuff. So most people know a little bit about the, the neutral and the hot wire and the ground. I mean, it's very, very basic basic stuff but I really think that it's a good market to be in and I think that if you want to do RV repair I think you should just jump at it we had a little bit of a jump because we, we know how to run a business from the few, from the past where we made a lot of money at one time not anymore we don't make any money now but we did at one time we, we made quite a bit of money and um, that money that money was nice but it's only there for a couple years until the cell phone took over and killed my computer business if, if you want to be a technician a lot of calls I get are actually for they're actually really a lot of them are almost I consider consider the calls as an, an emergency. It's an emergency that I have to be there. The slide won't go in. If you're going to go out and do something, do it. Create your website. Get your business cards, your Vista print. Create your website. I have a guy doing a website now. Um, well, we got the Depraze already up, but we're getting um, the Camper Pros. We're going to get that one going too. But a lot of people, you know, a lot of people tell me they're like Ross. You're not certified in the comments. What is there a certification for? So you can work on an air conditioner. It's a sealed unit. You don't have to put gas in a unit. I don't get it. It must just tell you like how to de-energize a capacitor on an AC unit. Well, use a screwdriver, go to the common and the hot. The spark takes the energy out of you so you don't get shocked. It's not a big deal. The hardest thing in changing an AC unit is taking it off the roof. It's heavy. You know, when you're alone, it's heavy when it's a 13 foot fifth wheel. If you want to be an RV technician, I think it should be, you, if you're gentle with your hands, there's, there's different people in this world. You know, some people are, are des designed just kind of like with the hammer and some people are designed with with the screwdriver and a little wedge and not not take the sledgehammer to it. Let's work it slowly. And, that, and that's the kind of hot guy you have to be. You got, these things are, you have to be gentle with these things. Gentle. These things break. Easy. Plastic Fantastics, they break. But you know, it, it's really not hard to run a business doing this. It's just, there's a lot of driving involved if you're gonna be a mobile unit. And if you're gonna have a building, you're gonna have a lot of overhead. So you kind of have to do the mobile thing before you get the building, if you wanna go that route because you got to get some money going until you get the building, which I'm planning on actually um, taking this to the beach, um, this business to the beach and having a business here, the Depraze here, and then Camper Pros at the beach. So we're going to probably do both businesses and we're going to keep the Depraze here, have a guy working here and have like two, three guys at the beach, maybe two guys. And I'm going to find a building and buy a building, fix it up um, so I can put the fifth wheels in and work on them. And probably going to do solar installs at the beach. 
Um, here's not bad because a lot of people come up here from Asheville to, to go to Asheville, so it's kind of like a, they like to see the leaves in the, in the, in the fall time, so I have an RV pad. I can do solar here too, but uh, built in, indoors is really nice. If it's raining, it's all indoors is nice. And you can put a strap on the roof with a cable system so you can harness yourself so you don't fall off the roof. It's kind of nice not to fall off the roof, you know. Oh, that's another thing. You can't be afraid of heights when you're working on RVs because you're going to be on the roof about 50% of the time. For some reason, I'm always on a roof. I don't know. I always get up on that roof. Um, maybe because I'm checking it out because it's cracked because they need die core on the roof almost every single call. Every single call, the roof needs die core. And learn where to get your parts. You can learn where to get, get your parts. And uh, I'd recommend calling in your area all the other RV places and, and um, give them work when you can't do the job. So if it's too hard for you to handle and just starting off, give them to them. They'll remember that, trust me. Give the job away if you can't handle it. If you're too busy, give the work away. Don't just hang up the phone. Well, I can't, oh, I'm too busy, hang up the phone. Give it to someone else that you know because that's, that, that, that works a relationship with them. And that's what you want. Just like we did with the computer business. I knew about five different computer shops. And if I needed a part, he would overnight me the part. I would do the same thing to him. I, I customer, he would remote in and help me with some networking jobs we couldn't do, my technicians. So. That kind of worked out. Yeah, I paid a pretty good amount of money for them to do that, but I didn't lose the customer, and I kept that customer. A lot of customers I have for, I, we have for 10 years, and if I didn't do that, kind of take a loss on that first call, I wouldn't have got the customer back. You have to think of a long-term in business. Don't ever, ever try to rake the customer for everything they have and walk away and then expect a call back. It's not gonna happen. Yeah, you have to charge for your time, and this is a skill where you get paid 85 to $120 an hour, just the way it is. Um, but out here, it's a little bit more towards 85 an hour, not the 120. By the beach, you can charge quite a bit. But don't you want referrals? Referrals is, the referrals is, you know, everybody says the referrals are like the best word of mouth is the best marketing you can get. And it is, it's true. A lot of people don't talk these days though. I get a couple customers that actually talk, which is really nice. But a lot of people don't refer you out because they don't talk, communicate like they did back in the day. They did with their phones and stuff, you know. There's more communication now, but there's no less one-on-one -on -one communication like, um, I, I, I mean, just like your neighbor, you could be neighbors with someone three houses, three doors down and not talk to them for five years. The communication's kind of broken there. I mean, there's more communication in phones and texts and Facebook, I understand that, but it just seems like people only talk if they, if they hear a bad experience. They don't talk about the good. You know, this guy was real good. They talk about, it's just this guy screwed my RV up and, then, and I couldn't get a hold of him again. And that's, they'll talk about that more than someone that you did a good job. When you, if you do a good job, they're gonna talk, to, talk about you less than if you did a horrible job, they're gonna talk about you more, and you don't want that. So I'll take the little bit of good talk than the real amount of bad talk about, you know? That's just the way it is. I really think that you guys should go out and do it. Don't be afraid of it. Anybody can do this job that has a little bit of handyman skills and electrical, that would be the two things. Plumbing's, plumbing's pretty easy. You crimp the, crimp the lines on, it's pretty easy. Um, it's not like you're rebuilding or plumbing a whole house and you gotta know all the code and everything, you don't. All you gotta do is go and it, it's leaking, cut it and put a new piece in and you're not really, it's really a no-brainer. So plumbing on these things are real easy. Recording everything that we do, you never really wanna get the customer involved on a camera, just you wanna get like the RV on a camera if you're gonna record like I do. Don't ever record the customers or any, don't record people. But I like to record stuff so that people see my work and if anything ever happens later on where um, fire, or a flood or anything else, you could see how I did the job right in the first time. Because it, it could be could have been from someone else that screwed it up and it's not your fault. But it's hard to prove if you don't have it on film, right? So that's why I film a lot on the calls. Plus to teach you guys how to fix RVs. I'm still learning from you in the comments, by the way. You just give me the comments. Sometimes I'll ask a couple favors in the comments and you guys just give me the favor, give me, you give me the answer. It, you you, you kind of guys, you're making it too easy for me. But I love you for that. Well, the logo should be coming in for the S10, and I'm looking at a Sprinter van, I'm looking at a box truck. Box trucks are bad on gas, so I'm trying to weigh things out. It's about business. Gas is going down to $2 a gallon, but next year it could go back up to three or four. I don't know. We don't, you don't know either. So should we get a box truck? Or should we be able to zing around with an expensive Sprinter van? Or should I get a little Astro van? Those are cheap, but they're not big enough. I don't know. Full size, full size Chevy van, full size Ford. I don't know. I don't know what to get. I'm thinking a full-size stretched van would be good. They're rough on fuel, but they're not like rough like a box truck rough, you know? So I think a, a full-size Chevy van would be probably the best. Maybe something with like a high top or something, but not too high where I can stand in. See, a box van you can actually get in an RV business and 
you can put an air conditioner on there with a little Honda generator in the back and you can be an air conditioner, put a little desk in there, look up parts on the computer, tell people pricing. That would be really nice on the road. But um, you can almost put a bathroom in there too. I find I drink a lot of water. I always gotta use the bathroom and I'm, st I'm stuck, no bathroom. But well, it's nice out here because I, you know, there's a lot of woods out here too. It's almost like I don't want to leave for vacation because I have so many calls going now and I'm backed up. So to take a week off when you're backed up and that kind of sucks. So I'm the whole time I'm thinking I'm going to be thinking about these calls while I'm on vacation. I don't know. Maybe I'll do some calls over there. I, I'm having fun working on a van, by the way. It's, it's a great project, a solar project. I love it. Well, I was going to make this video longer, but I'm not going to because I'm pouring sweat here. It's like hot again. Happy Father's Day, by the way, and thank you, Heather, for the shirt, for the Father's Day shirt and pants.